Now I've got uh, piece number one in place there, the little shrubs in the distance. Now I'm going to add my piece number two and go ahead and pull that freezer paper out and set that aside. So I'm going to line this one up with my hill marks where I can see them. And I'm not going to worry about it being too exact. I kind of want it to be in place. but um, And again, this is going to extend beyond this hill line because it needs to be covered up by that other hill. And I want this to be off off beyond my what's going to be my my finished edge. It's going to be about that far off. So those are the two things I really want to watch most of all. And just kind of generally get the hill sort of in place here. Okay, and then I'll take my pins and once again pin it into place. Now this time I'm going to probably put a few more pins in it because I've got this larger piece. So I'm going to put some pins fairly close together. Make sure I have it secure. And you can see, I think, there. yeah, there's a little bit of pencil line showing there. Again, that's why I use the pencil that I'm using is because that line is not going to show when all is said and done. So I'm going to grab a few more pins here. Put another pin in. And I'm trying to make sure I keep it smooth as I go. These little pins are nice, but they can be hard to get hold of. They go through the fabric very nicely. Okay, and we can see that I have now um, covered up that seam there and I've covered up the <clears throat> raw edge of the piece underneath it. Those are the two main things I need to look at and it looks like things are laying smooth on my background. So then I'm going to repeat my process of stitching over to here um, to hold down my, my heel in place. Now I have piece number two in place and one of the things I like to do at this point is to take my glue stick and just put a few dots just along that bottom edge and then I'm just going to tap those into place. I just find I like to have this piece down in this section held um, against my background fabric for when I put the next pieces down there. It's just a little trick I have found that helps me out in getting things laying nicely and smoothly where they need to be. So next I'm going to take a look at my barn. So I have my barn pieces here and remember I told you I was going to put that roof on before I added it so that I could fold under that little tip to the back side. So that is what I'm going to work on next. So I kind of have it in place here where it looks good. I've got my red underneath covered up. And so I'm going to go ahead and I might scoot it down a little bit more. I want it so that's where the curve of the barn is here and on top of that. And then I want this edge to be where where the silo and the barn kind of meet. So once I'm happy with how it's sitting, I'm going to take one of my pins and pin it into place. Apparently I'm pinning
holding my finger into place too. Okay, and, and I'm going to thread my needle with a brown thread and show you how I proceed from there. Okay, so I've got my needle threaded now and before I proceed I wanted to show you I realized I forgot to talk about what threads I use. And when I first started um, doing some hand applique I had these masterpiece threads the bobbins uh, version in these little holders that had all the different colors and I really liked that because I had such a variety of colors to use and they worked they worked really well but I have since switched to Superior Threads Kimono Silk Threads. Um, I just These are a much finer thread and they're very strong and they just completely disappear into the fabric as I'm sewing. So I wanted to show you here too the difference between, between the two. So here's a strand of the Superior Thread and here's my one strand of the brown, the Silk Thread and you can kind of see the difference in thickness there I hope but uh, yeah so the silk thread I have just fallen in love with it I haven't had any tangling issues um, it's just been really nice to work with and as I said it completely disappears into my project okay so I've got my barn set here ready to go pinned in place and I'm going to start over here at this end I'm not for now going to worry about that little part that's flipping under I'll deal with that when I actually sew the barn onto the background fabric. So I'm going to come up with my needle here at the top of the barn. And it looks like I pulled my thread right on through. Let's try that again. Okay, so I'm going to come up here at the top, and then turn it here so I can see what I'm doing, and so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to use that same stitch to go around the barn uh, roof here, and attach it to my barn. pulled it right back out. A little finagly here while I'm standing here trying to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to keep stitching my way around the roof here until I have it secured. So I'm going to stitch around this part and come back up to the top here and then I will, and once I have it there, I'm just going to stop. Um, I'm actually not going to cut my thread at that point because I can use that same thread just to attach this to the background fabric. So I'll show you how I do that after I finish stitching the rest of the roof. So I have stitched all the way around my little roof. And now I'm going to, I just tuck my needle in here. Now I'm going to line up my barn with where it goes on the background fabric. Um, remembering again that I can see my line here where my heel goes. And so I see that my barn is sticking nicely beyond that. So I've got it in a good spot. Um, I can bring it down a little bit or I can have it up. I can just decide how tall I really want that barn to be too. So. Okay, and then I'm going to use some of my pins to pin this in place. Going through, this is one of the drawbacks of these uh, pins is they're so fine that when I'm trying to go through several layers, and I think I moved it when I did that, so I'm going to take it out and scooch. I think I'll stick one in the bottom here first to just hold it in place. There we go. Okay, and now I can pin it to hold it for stitching. So I want to pin up here at the top. I want to 
are still looking good. Replacement. Grab my next pin. here on the silo side. Okay, now getting out my needle and thread because remember I didn't cut my thread. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch across the top here um, and then see if I can flip that underneath. So I'm going to start right here. Work my way across the roof. getting close to that spot so I'm going to tuck this under just use my needle to push it under where I want it and take because that's kind of thick I'm going to take a couple extra stitches right here make sure it's nice and secure having it tucked down there well and it looks like I didn't get it tucked down there well so let's try that stitch again and again I'm going to take a couple two or three just to make sure oh looks like I did I come unthreaded yes I did I came Unthreaded here. I'm going to see how good I am with threading a needle. There we go. And in that process, I've dangled myself up. Okay, so a couple, two or three stitches right there in the corner to hold everything secure. I do that when I come to corners anyway. I just take a few extra stitches to make sure it's held down well, kind of to tack it in place. Okay, and then I'm going to um, finish off this brown thread and then switch to my red thread for the rest of the barn. And so I'll be stitching down along this side. I don't have to worry about this edge. And then I'm going to stitch around this edge and this edge. Again, I don't have to worry about the top because it's going to be covered up by the other roof piece. So I'll have that in place and then I will be able to add my little roof for the silo and put that in place um, and stitch all the way around it to finish off the barn. Well, I have my barn done now and I wanted to show you too that uh, you know I've added all the pieces. Um, but I decided as I went down and did this side of the barn, I just did a basting stitch across the bottom to kind of hold that in place. So that's ready. Now we're going to move on to pieces three, four, and five. So clearly I got excited about doing the barn and did the barn out of order, but it doesn't matter on this one. So on that part. Um, so now I need to add the tree and the shrubs onto this side. Now the tricky part is I can no longer see the lines that I have 
and so what I've done is, is you can use a window tape it up to a window I've put my pattern underneath again and I'm going to line up the pattern pieces that I've placed with my guide underneath there's my barn there's my shrub so I'm going to have that all lined up and then I can with the light I can actually see I I think it's, it looks like it's too dark for you to see but I can actually see the placement of my next bushes so I can put my number three bush down here which is going to be next and I'm going to stick a pin to hold it now part of the three bush is going to be off out of the seam so um, we're going to stick that in there with a pin just to hold it in place temporarily here pinned in place and then I'm going to make sure I'm all lined up again because it wiggled as I was pinning of course find my barn spot and my shrub spot and then I'm going to go ahead while I've got this I'm going to take my number four piece here and I'm going to put it in place um, the other thing you can do if you can't really see there is just kind of eyeball it you can flip back and forth and see that okay I've got this there and there's the line for that and there's the line for the trees and just kind of judge because it's not going to matter if you have them you know as long as you kind of have them in somewhat of a similar fashion it really isn't going to matter the only important part here is that all of your raw edges are down below where that next piece is going to lay across here so if you have your raw edges at least down to this point you're going to be good to go so let me again take that. The light is not showing real well on this shrub part over here. I wonder if I can. Maybe if I turn the light here down, it will. There, now you can see. See what's going on. Although I can't see what's going on, so give me a moment here, and I'll put this this one in place. Okay, so I can see that it goes right there. holding it in place and then I'm going to turn this down so that you can actually see what I've done there so I'm going to go ahead with some thread needle and thread and stitch the two front shrubs in place then I'll come back and put my tree in between them and I'm not even going to worry about lining up with our with the thing underneath. I just know that man, that looks good. I'll put it in there and uh, come back after those pieces are done. I wanted to show you on this little tree that when I come to these inner um, corners, I like to take a couple of extra extra stitches just right there, just to you know, because we we clip that. And so there's not a lot of fabric folded under there. So I just like to take two or three little stitches to kind of reinforce that corner a little bit before moving on. I just wanted to take a moment and mention that to you before we go on. We've got another inner corner here. I did the same thing here, but I thought it was easier for you to see there. So I'll do the same thing when I come to those inner corners. I just take a two or three extra stitches it just makes me feel like I've got that section a little more secure well we are getting there only two pieces left to go for this week piece number nine here peel off the um, freezer paper okay so I'm going to stick this one on I want it to extend a little bit past my mark there so Having it go in there and make sure I'm up here at this point. I'm going to just kind of lay it in the general spot before I pin it in place. Make sure I have it the way I like it. Everything's covering up. So I've got the, the raw edges of the barn covered up. And I've got the raw edges of the the second hill that we put on, well really the first hill, but number two piece that we put on, that's got those rods covered up. So 
I'm happy with how that looks so I'm going to go ahead and pin piece 9 into place and then I will stitch it down and come on back to show you piece 10. I decided before I moved on to um, stitching down piece 9 I wanted to show you which I neglected to before that um, with my pattern underneath um, I, yeah you can see that I have the what the edge of the um, design is going to be. You can see that line is there. So that's the other thing. I want to make sure that I'm well on the other side of that so that uh, when I sew my seam I'm going to have some fabric to catch in that. And also again double check down here you want to make sure that you're going to be underneath those sections that will be laying on top. And I've got that nicely under there so I'm good to go there. And just wanted to show you that before I moved on. So I have the um, piece number nine in, in place stitched down now and I went ahead and used my light box to draw the line of that little section where the next piece number 10 is going to go. But before I do that, I once again am going to just put some dots of glue here on the along this edge. just to hold it in place so everything stays nice and smooth smooth it down and there we go okay so my final piece number 10 here gonna lay this and I'll line my little lines back up here too there we go because I can see where other things need to need to be so I'm gonna guess like about there. See how we lay out here. I'm covering up covering up those nicely. Let's stick it this way just a little bit more to get it over on this edge. So I've got I can tell I've got that much underneath my trees and shrubs. And I'm laying here on my on my line, fine tuning it, and once again I've got enough extending beyond those places, so that's going to be covered up. And this I don't have to worry about because I was a little worried there for a minute. There's going to be this sheep coming down, so it'll have that little space covered. So I think I'm ready to pin this in place and then stitch piece number 10 which is our final piece for week number one of our sew along. Well I've got them done. All of the first 10 pieces are in place and I'm liking the way this is looking. So I hope you uh, will give it a try yourself and I hope you found the videos helpful as you do your process just to see what I do and how I do it. and. Let me know if you have any questions or if you found the videos helpful. Um, and I'm looking forward to next week when we will be doing another few pieces to add on to our little Bo Peep um, block for the baby quilt.